Hi, you're watching Teen Kids News. I'm Reed. Let's begin with our top story. It's a building block of life itself, but too much of it can be very bad for your health. Benjamin has the story. Salt is everywhere. It's about 3% of the ocean, our bodies need it to survive, and we love its taste. My favorite salty foods are probably chips. Um, onion rings and french fries. French fries are my favorite. I really like pretzels and chips. Oh, I'd have to say potato chips and french fries. My favorite salty foods, probably salt and vinegar chips and also um, crunchy seaweed. The problem is too much salt is unhealthy. Within our bodies, our kidneys help regulate our salt intake. And so sometimes when we have taken too much salt, our bodies have a hard time getting rid of all of that. And so it can build up in our bloodstream. And so over the course of time, we can end up with high blood pressure. And so with that extra blood pressure, our body starts to retain and can take on extra fluid, which ultimately can also lead to heart disease. Unfortunately, the average American takes in twice as much salt as they should. That's because so much of our food contains a lot of salt. Take, for instance, fast food. Some of the fast food foods like our hamburgers, our french fries, chicken nuggets, not only are they fried foods, they're also, they've already been pre-cooked and had salt added and then salt is re-added to these foods. Then there's the salt that comes in what's called processed food. For example, canned or instant soups, many breakfast cereals, cheese, deli meats, sugary drinks, other sources of processed foods tend to be more of like frozen foods, so something like chicken nuggets that we pull out of the freezer, or french fries, or, you know, pizza rolls. And let's not forget about snacks like chips, pretzels, and cookies. All those types of foods are going to be high sources of salt. So to cut down on salt, ask yourself. Is there opportunity for us to look at ways to incorporate maybe more fruits and vegetables and pairing it with something like yogurt or a low-fat dip? Even if you're not a foodie. There are ways to add flavor to meals without adding salt. Is there other flavors that we like? So could we add lemon? Could we add garlic? And so looking at ways to enhance the flavor of our foods that we're preparing without adding salt to them. And when you're shopping for packaged food, check the label. Salt is listed as sodium. It's measured in milligrams. And you don't need more than 2,300 milligrams a day. They add up fast. Experts say at some fast food restaurants, you could consume the entire day's recommended amount of salt in just one meal. Make an effort now to start reducing the amount of salt you eat. Your future self will thank you. For Teen Kids News, I'm Benjamin. We still have a lot more to tell you about. Teen Kids News will be right back. In a bit of Belgium, we visit the most popular tourist spot in Brussels. This is La Grande Place, or in English, the Grand Place. For more than nine centuries, it has been the center of Brussels for trade, for politics, and now for tourism. There is little wonder why. Surrounded by majestic buildings, this is considered one of the world's most beautiful city squares. Originally a humble marketplace where vendors sold items like meat and cloth, the square became the epicenter of early capitalism. Hundreds of tradesmen banded together by specialty, forming guilds, what today we'd call unions. They became so wealthy they built guild halls that looked like palaces. Sitting on the site where bakers used to sell bread, this imposing building is now a museum. The square showpiece is the town hall. Begun in the 15th century, it was remodeled a number of times. When you look at it, does something seem off? Here's a hint. Look at the clock tower. You'd expect it to be in the center of the building, but it's not. 
As you can see, the left side is longer than the right. That brings us back to the remodeling. Legend has it that when the architect saw his mistake, he jumped from the clock tower. That's probably just a tale. The unusual position of the tower is probably because there just wasn't enough room to extend the building to make both sides equal. The town hall is the seat of the city's government. Here too, the power of the guilds is still felt. The rich merchants spared no expense in richly decking out the hall, ensuring that they had a seat at the governing table alongside the aristocracy. No, in our country, we speak Flemish in the north and French in the south. Guides take visitors on a grand tour of the grandly appointed rooms. Like so many places tracing its history back to the medieval times, the square had its ugly episodes. Public executions were held here. The city was also attacked by the French. Nearly all the buildings were destroyed, but then quickly rebuilt. Years later, the French returned under Napoleon. He ended the power of the powerful guilds. Adding insult to injury, he stripped the guild halls of their lavish furnishings and had them auctioned off in the square. And for some strange reason, in the 1960s, they turned this beautiful square into a parking lot. Fortunately, that didn't last. But here's an idea that has lasted. Every two years, the square is covered with a unique and colorful carpet, a carpet of flowers, about a million of them. There's one more thing about the Grand Square that's particularly special to us here at Teen Kids News. And that's what's happening in Brussels for kids. When our program began 20 years ago, this was one of the first locations in Europe where we shot a story. What do you think your parents worry about the most and why? Um, me. As I said, that was 20 years ago. That cute kid is probably a parent herself now. My, how time flies. For Teen Kids News, I'm Ava. We've got to take a short break, and then we'll be back with more Teen Kids News. 50 U.S. states, 50 state flags, each with its own unique history. Here's Eric with Flag Facts. You might not want a close encounter with a beehive, but you have to admire how much work goes into making that honey. It's that spirit of industry that puts a beehive in the middle of the state flag of Utah. The beehive is a symbol of industry, commerce, and hard work, and would seem to be a perfect symbol for a state like Utah, which was so difficult to settle. It did take a lot of hard work to create a state in the middle of the desert. It took a lot of faith, too. Mormons were seeking a place to practice their form of Christianity, which was new and controversial. In 1830, Joseph Smith began the Mormon religion in upstate New York. They quickly had to leave upstate New York because of religious persecution, and after a brief stop in the Midwest, they settled in the territory that would become Utah. The Mormons arrived in 1847. The date is right there on the flag, along with 1896, the year the state entered the Union. At first, Mormon leader Brigham Young wanted to claim a much bigger territory and call it Deseret. Congress didn't go for that. So the state was smaller and named after the Ute Indians who were there first. But one thing that's very interesting about the state is that of all 50 states, it boasts the youngest population with an average age of 27.1 years. Utah is also famous for amazing natural wonders with two great national parks, Zion and Bryce Canyons. They're too big to put on the flag. I'm Eric with Flag Facts. They say that safe driving is no accident. You have to work at being safe. To help with that, here's another short video from the National Road Safety Foundation. 
You always have to be careful when you drive. But during bad weather conditions, you have to be extra careful. The deadliest driving hazard is rain. It causes about 7,000 deaths a year. When driving in rain, always use your headlights and windshield wipers. And slow down. Snow and ice make roads slippery. Be sure to drive slower. And keep extra distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Fog reduces visibility. Experts advise that you use your headlights on low beam. Not on high beam when driving in fog. Again, slow down. Keep extra distance. And watch for brake lights ahead of you. Wind can also be a problem. Keep both hands on the steering wheel for maximum control. And beware of driving alongside large vehicles like tractor trailers. Strong winds can unexpectedly push trucks into your lane. Remember, whatever the weather, you need the right skills to drive safe. Don't miss the other cool videos created by the NRSF. It's easy to find more. Simply like, follow, and subscribe to the National Road Safety Foundation. We'll be right back with more Teen Kids News right after this. Few of us love taking tests, but some of us actually dread test taking so much our stress causes us to do less well than we should. Helping to overcome that test anxiety is the subject of today's Yoga and You report. Here's Emily. So Brenda, how can yoga help me overcome the stress I face before taking a big test? When you have stress from a test, a test anxiety, you can lose your concentration and your focus. Mm -hmm. So to overcome that, you can do a pose such as this. You step forward, okay, and then roll the shoulders back, open the chest, open those arms up, take a deep breath, and exhale and bring those hands back together. Mm -hmm. Another thing that happens when you have test anxiety is you feel ungrounded. Mm -hmm. So another great pose to do is downward facing dog. So we come down onto the mat, hands forward, walk those feet back a little bit. This builds strength as well as calms the mind because it's an inversion. So it's a very calming effect because mm -hmm. the heart is above the head. And then we can come on down. So this was downward dog. And what was the first one called? It's a variation of the warrior one position. All right, very nice. Well, I feel really good. And I'm definitely ready to tackle those tests. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brenda. You're welcome. With Yoga and You, I'm Emily. Scientists who study the Earth's climate are called climatologists. They've identified five major climate zones, polar, tropical, temperate, dry, and continental. Interestingly, there's only one country on Earth that has all five zones, the United States. Alaska is polar, southern Florida and Hawaii are tropical, huge parts of the Midwest and central East Coast are temperate, five states are considered dry, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada, and Wyoming. California and Oregon both boast having continental climates. So, if you're ever planning a trip to another part of the U.S., be sure to pack for the appropriate weather. For Teen Kids News, I'm Alexandra. It's time for a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back with more Teen Kids News. So don't go away. I don't want to be depressed Yikes. Fighting all day with the demons in my head I was just trying to get dressed to get Gotta switch it up when I'm sitting in my sweat As you can hear, they're called SM6. And to date, they've racked up some pretty big numbers. 
more than 3 million followers, and their videos have received more than 2.5 billion views. Here's an excerpt from their song, Let Me Be Happy. It's my imbalance Wish that I could sit down relax It's such a challenge I guess we can all identify with working at a job like that. But there's a deeper message in the song. Joining us are three members of SM6. Emily, Ellie, and Jack. Hi. What's going on? Emily, the song has more to do with dealing with mental health than fast food, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it does. I think, uh, everyone deals with, you know, striving for finding happiness and feeling, you know, that, you know, kind of like self-love and being happy. And, uh, there's always going to be people out there, I think, that kind of bring you down or, um... Always going to be those bad days. Or, yeah, or sometimes you feel like everything may not be going your way, but, um, it's definitely about trying to see the... You know, the, uh, the, the good side. The good side. Yeah, always yeah, yeah. striving to be happy. Yeah, yeah. Trying to find that happiness and look on the better side of things. That's, yeah. that's why we try putting through this song. Yeah. <laughs> Many bands say they're close, almost like family. But Ellie, that's literally true with SM6, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're actually all siblings. Um, yeah, we also have three other siblings, George, Isabel, and Adam. I sometimes forget that we're uh, like brothers and sisters because I also feel like we're just a big friend group, and it's like, you guys are my best friends, and to be able to do this career together and feel that way, it's just amazing. You three are the youngest in the group. What's the age range of SM6? Uh, so it goes all the way from me being the youngest, 15, and all the way to 24, the oldest, George. What was the biggest challenge starting the band? A lot of people didn't really take us seriously, but it was hard to book gigs and get people to kind of notice us because we are a kid band. Yeah, some of us were like 10 years old, <laughs> yeah. so they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you overcame that with the help of perseverance and an unusual TikTok called the Don't Flinch Challenge. Don't Flinch Challenge, go! <laughs> it was just some stupid video of us standing in front of a car and trying not to flinch while someone um, honked, the honked the horn. And for whatever reason, that went viral and then I don't know, I guess we just gained a big fan base, and uh, that's really helped us in our career, though. On your debut album, Rom-Com, you run through a whole range of emotions, from friendship to romance to breaking up. What's the message you're sending? Well, you want to that, take that this? That was a very um, good question. Well, it's yeah. kind of... The message is really kind of going through the different stages of love, because... Isabel, being the lyricist in the band, she wanted to kind of portray that message. And channel of, that emotion. Channel that, that emotion. So of, many you know, people go through, you know, whether yeah. it's like this, you know, the sad or the breakup or the first excitement of yeah. when you start to like or someone. Or wanting to be more, yeah, be, wanting to be more than friends. Or yeah, yeah, or it's like that scenario where you're friends with someone forever, but then you want to be something yeah. more. So it kind of hits every little stage that someone yeah. might have felt when, uh, going through their lives and, you know, finding love, so. Clearly you enjoy playing music, but you seem to really love performing live before fans. Yeah, yes. it's definitely a different experience. For me personally, I like uh, performing on stage a lot more than being in the studio recording the music. I think it's because the adrenaline of running out on stage and like with everybody screaming. And we have so many people that come out to these shows and that care for us. And when they're singing our lyrics, it's just so crazy to see. Yeah. Um, you know, that hard work, work that we put into the music and now that it's out Paying off. and that people enjoy it is, is quite amazing. <laughs> and it's been amazing meeting with you. Thanks for talking with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. The band's lead singer, older sister Isabel, says that people constantly thank them for making such a difference in their lives. She goes on to say, 
I love that we're spreading positivity and we're helping other people through music, and that's what we're really going for. We certainly all could use a bit more positivity these days. Here's another excerpt from SM6. By the way, I should point out that some of their songs do contain explicit lyrics. For Teen Kids News, I'm Katerina. That's it for this edition of Teen Kids News. Thanks for watching. See you again next week.